Assalamu alaikum. Today we will discuss tuberous sclerosis complex in detail as it is really important as a clinical case and exam point of view. MCQs are asked from this topic. It might show up as a short case or as a clinical slide quiz. In this lecture, we'll cover it from all these aspects and we'll also discuss the clinical examination scheme of tuberous sclerosis in the same way as expected out of us in the exams. To start off, tuberous sclerosis is a hamartomatous disorder means it has hamartomas in the skin and other organs. Hamartoma is basically a benign mass of tissue which is present in its original tissue but it has abnormal architecture. So it arises from its native tissue but the architecture is abnormal. This disorder is called tuberous sclerosis complex or TSC because there is multi-system involvement. Complex because there is multi-system involvement and there is variable manifestation of the disease. And uh, it is an autosomal dominant disorder and the two gene mutations which are responsible for it are TSC1 and TSC2. TSC1 is also called tuberin and TSC2 is also called hamartin. You should also know that in 75% of the cases, these mutations are spontaneous mutations. Tuberin and hamartin, they basically form a complex and negatively regulate the mTOR signaling. When mTOR signaling is negatively regulated, uh, there is uh, abnormal cellular differentiation, proliferation and migration and that results in multiple hamartomas. This is the exact reason that in patients with tuberous sclerosis complex, mTOR inhibition by rapamycin or other similar agents can have therapeutic benefit. The cutaneous involvement in tuberous sclerosis includes ash leaf macules or ash leaf spots. Uh, they are hyperpigmented patches like this and uh, chagrin patch which is basically a collagenoma and angiofibromas uh, they are falsely called adenoma sebaceum and conan tumors they are basically periungal fibromas and also caffeolin macules ash leaf macules are basically hyperpigmented patches uh, they are present on trunk and limbs histologically melanocytes are present in these lesions as opposed to vitiligo in which melanocytes are absent basically in uh, ash leaf macules there is decreased melanin because there is decreased tyrosinase activity we can keep um, nevus anemicus nevus depigmentosus vitiligo post-inflammatory hypopigmentation in the differentials of ash leaf macules and this is a case of basically nevus anemicus so in case of nevus anemicus when we do dioscopy test or place a glass press a glass slide uh, on the border of these lesions uh, nevus anemicus merges with the surrounding skin uh, but uh, this won't happen in the case of ash leaf macule now moving on to the straight giveaway of tuberous sclerosis diagnosis is uh, adenoma sebaceum but keep in mind adenoma sebaceum is a misnomer because this is not an adenoma arising from sebaceous glands. Angiofibroma is a more appropriate name because there are hyperplastic blood vessels, there is collagen in these lesions. There, are, there is also sebaceous gland. And uh, conan tumors are also angiofibromas. Conan tumors are basically periungal fibromas. When you see cutaneous angiofibromas, as you see in this case, in exam, describe this as discrete, firm, discrete, red brown till injectatic papules present on the butterfly area of the face or whatever extension you see in that patient. So there are other angiofibromas in dermatology. Four are there that at least I know of. One is adenoma sebaceum that we discussed in tuberous cirrhosis. Conan tumors or periungal fibromas are also present in tuberous cirrhosis. Penile pearly papules are also angiofibromas. And fibrous papule of the face, it is also called salutary angiofibroma. These all four are angiofibromas in dermatology that I know of. So in case the examiner asks, there's your answer. Chagrin patch is uh, basically a collagenoma. It is usually present in the lumbosacral region. And histolo in histology, we see dense collagen. You see there is thick collagen. Uh, and very few adnexal structures. There is loss of elastin. And you can really appreciate that there is no inflammatory infiltrate. These are all the findings of a chagrin patch or the collagenoma. And uh, in the visceral uh, lesions, visceral lesions are also all hamartomas 
there are renal angiomyolipomas this is the commonest lesion it is present now 80 percent of the patients renal cysts cardiac rhabdomyomas in lungs you can have lymphangiomatosis cysts pneumothorax and interstitial fibrosis looking at all these lesions you must understand that most of these are diagnosed radiologically so uh, radiological investigation is very important in the case of tuberous sclerosis so in the clinical quiz when you see one of the cutaneous features that we discussed previously of tuberous sclerosis and the rest are all radiological images there is a hint of tuberous sclerosis and uh, speaking of which pause the next slide write down your findings on a piece of paper or you can also write down the comments i'll check later test yourself now pause the video. This is a very favorite uh, question in exams that what is the tuberous sclerosis triad? It is also called void triad. It is also called epiloia. I hope I'm pronouncing it correct. This, this term was coined by Sherlock. And uh, tuberous sclerosis complex is also called Boneville disease because it was um, first described by Mor Morbus Boneville in the um, 1880. And uh, tuberous sclerosis triad, uh, you need to know this. Tuberous sclerosis triad consists of adenoma sebaceum, low IQ, or and a third one is epilepsy. So this triad makes up the basic triad of tuberous sclerosis. Now coming on to the short case. If you get a key, clinical case of tuberous sclerosis in the exam, how would you approach the patient? This slide is very important because uh, this is the way you approach all your patients in the short case. This is not very specific for uh, just the tuberous sclerosis. First of all, greet the examiner. Salam uh, unhe. Listen to the command and then greet the patient and introduce yourself and tell the patient you'll be examining him in a gentle manner and it won't hurt him. और जब आपने मरीज से पूछना हो तो आप उनसे बेहतर आप ये कहेंगे मरीज से कि उम्मीद है मैं आपको मायना करूंगा उम्मीद है आप तावन करेंगे बजाय इसे कि आप पूछें कि आपकी इजाजत है और वो आगे से कह दें नहीं तो आ, हमने अपने असाजा से यही सीखा कि यू हैव टू आस्क द पेशेंट कि उम्मीद है कि आप तावन करेंगे अच्छा दिस इज़ द स्कीम बिच आई फॉलो यू कैन एडिट द स्कीम टू सूट योर नीड्स एंड वट एवर द पेशेंट यू हैव so first of all, uh, the examiner usually give the, gives the command that examine the face of the patient and do the relevant. So in the face, you look for uh, angiofibromas and uh, you also examine the forehead and the scalp. There might be fibromatous plaque there. I check the vision, use a vision card and do this quick. And in the oral cavity, look for fibromas and uh, dental pits. Use a magnifying glass when examining the face because these adenoma sebaceum have uh, telangiectasias in them. Um, they are they would only be visible uh, when you use a magnifying glass. Either ways, you have to use it in, in, to show the examiner. Then move on. You can examine the thyroid of the patient, which appear uh, appears in large, which might appear in large. In the hand, you see periungal fibromas, or conant tumors, lumbosacral area, chagrin patch. Then inspect the trunk and legs for ash leaf macules there might also be caffeolum macules and uh, uh, then auscultate the heart the lungs palpate the abdomen check for shifting dullness and bell out the kidney and if you get time you can also check for uh, any pedunculated fibroma which is present in neck or axilla of the patient you must know that in exam the time is short and examiners are staring at you and your heart is racing so if you examine something that you shouldn't have and examiner asks you why did you examine that if you don't have a good reason it's better to say that i don't want to miss um, any incidental finding uh, i know it doesn't apply any everywhere but you would know where to use it this is also something i learned from my teachers the differentials of tuberous sclerosis include um, acne vulgaris because it looks like adenoma sebaceum but there are no comedones in tuberous sclerosis and multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1 in which there are angiofibromas, there is collagenoma, there might be lipomas, and ash leaf macules or cafele macules. Uh, here's a chart which explains multiple endocrine neoplasia, type 1, type 2, type 3. This chart is very important for MCQs. You can pause the video and review it quickly. Moving on. It is very important to know the age-wise sequence of cutaneous findings in tuberous sclerosis. So uh, ash leaf macules and intellectual impairment and epilepsy, they develop early. 
and angio fibroma chagrin patch and conant tumors develop around puberty so if asked an exam you can tell that ash leaf macules develop may be present at birth or may develop at infancy there may be intellectual impairment or epilepsy in infancy angio fibromas start developing around 4 years of age and they get more extensive at puberty chagrin patch develops after angio fibromas and conant tumors develop around puberty one tip uh for answering the uh, examiner's question in viva is to give broad crisp and quick answer you don't have to get into every minor detail um in the first answer if needed the examiner can ask you more questions and you can get into more detail firstly give a broad answer and they give the examiner a chance to ask further questions and also keep in mind that in exam you it's almost impossible to know each and everything so just give your best and give an overview of what you know other systemic findings in tuberous sclerosis are endocrine findings in which pituitary can be involved adrenal thyroid can be involved there could be precocious puberty and uh, also there could be gigantism in gi tract there are colonic polyps which are basically hematomas and in eye there could be retinal phacomas and hypopigmented iris spots these spots are basically uh, analogous to ash leaf spots on the skin and phacoma uh, is hematoma of glial tissue and it is seen as white streaks along the blood vessels you can see in this picture if a child is diagnosed with tuberous sclerosis then you can also screen the parents for this condition and uh, we can look for ash leaf macules do a wood slamp exam to confirm our diagnosis uh, of ash leaf macule and uh, we can go for renal ultrasound or any other radiological examination to look for abnormality in the kidney and we can also refer to the ophthalmology department to do an eye exam and look for phacoma or hypopigmented iris spots if there is only skin involvement in tuberous sclerosis then the prognosis is good but if there is multi multi system involvement at an early age or early onset of seizures and very refractory to treatment seizures these all are poor prognostic factors and the statistics are that 3% of these patients with these um, above two conditions they die in first year of age and 75% of these patients with multi system and cns and seizure involvement they die before 25 years of age by far the number one cause of death in epilepsy uh, in tuberous sclerosis is epilepsy and its complications then infections then brain tumors congestive cardiac failure and interstitial lung disease this is the diagnostic criteria of, for tuberous sclerosis you can pause the video and read it please don't try to memorize it if unfortunately as in the exam give a broad overview tell three major and three minor criteria but tell this to the examiner and confess that you forgot the rest moving on to the examine uh, investigations is you can do a skull x ray to look for calcifications in this image you can see calcifications and uh, you can also do a ct scan or mri to look for cns tumors chest x ray hrct pulmonary function test to look for lung abnormalities and uh, x ray hand to look for cysts in the phalanges it this image was also present in one of the quiz slides before and you can do an eye exam you can refer to ophthalmology department and uh, you can do an ultrasound or ct abdomen to look for abnormality of the kidneys and finally the management so for angio fibromas of the skin you can do pulse dye laser or co2 laser which is an ablative laser um you can call in all concerned specialties and make the best decision for patient management and topical rapamycin is given for cutaneous angio fibromas and systemic rapamycin is helpful for visceral tumors and epilepsy rapamycin is basically mtor inhibitor which we discussed in the first slide of this presentation and we also give anti epileptics in case of seizures and uh, we do neurosurgery in case of cns tumors and finally genetic counseling is also a part of management of tuberous sclerosis complex so that was all for today i hope we all learned something today thank you so much for watching all the best for your exams and a laugh is